California. I'm Joey Gonzalez, and your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Tonight's matchup features a visiting Rockland Thunder against the host Antelope Titans. Rockland comes into tonight's game with an overall record of 5-5, five and five, while the home team Titans, while the home team Antelope is 9-1. and one. Well, here we are, high school football fans. The 11 grueling and exciting weeks of football has led up to this, the Sac Joaquin section playoffs. Six divisions, 76 teams, all vying for a section championship over the next four weeks and a potential regional playoff berth. The Rockland Thunder finished third in the Tough Sierra Foothill League. It took a last-second 33-yard field goal from Del Oro to knock the Thunder down. Nonetheless, they received an at-large playoff bid and a 13 seed from the selection committee. After missing the playoffs last year, the Thunder are looking for their first section title since they beat Del Oro in the 2009 season, earning themselves a spot in the D2 State Bowl game that year. This is their fourth playoff appearance in school history and third in the last four years. The Thunder look to be a real threat in this division with talented junior quarterback Logan Webb and the versatile do-everything player Daniel Niffin. The Thunder suffered early losses to Pleasant Grove, Oak Ridge, and Del Campo, but righted the ship with a late non-league winning streak and winning three straight in the in-league before losing to Del Oro. Rockland comes in averaging 260 yards a game through the air, good enough to lead the Sierra Foothill League while averaging 95 yards per game on the ground. They have a trio of receivers in Corey Burmester, Spencer Gregg, and Dominic Giampoli, who are in the top four in receiving in the S SFL. On the other side of the ball, Antelope comes in riding a seven-game winning streak, including winning a thriller against Whitney. The Titans came back from a 20-0 first-quarter deficit to beat the Wildcats 35-27 and win their second Capital Athletic League title in three years. They are hosting their first playoff game in school history and probably have their best shot to win their first playoff game ever. Their 9-1 record is the best in school history and helped to get them the number four seed in Division II. Seen as a dark horse to come out of the stacked division, the Titans run a pro-style offense featuring a tight end and two back sets. They keep defenses honest by keeping a run-pass balanced attack. Wide receiver Tyler Winston led the Capital Athletic League in receiving yards with 678 and scored 11 touchdowns along the way. He is the playmaker who can do everything on both sides of the ball. Watch for quarterback Tyler McCombs to go to him early and often. The Titans like to pound the ball behind running back Jonathan Krippus, who is second in the Capital Athletic League in rushing with 1,114 yards and nine touchdowns. The Titans are a fast athletic team who feel that they are never out of a ball game, convincing uh, coming back from a 20 to nothing first quarter deficit against Whitney last week. There will be plenty of fireworks here tonight in Antelope as these two teams battle it out in the first round of the Sac Joaquin section playoffs. That's going to do it for tonight's PlayOnSports.com pregame show. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a few minutes. Friday Night Football begins next on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. 
beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. BP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Right, prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, 
Go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? You start the stream. Hammer three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Welcome back to Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. Coming to you live from Antelope, California. I'm Joey Gonzalez. Going to be joined alongside Brian Hassler, my producer here from time to time this evening. He did a great job last week. He's going to be joining me in again. But uh, we're here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's matchup features the Rockland Thunder, the 5-5 five and five Rockland Thunder, I'm sorry, visiting the 9-1 and one Antelope Titans. Just under, getting underway here in the Division Two, Sac Joaquin section first round. And Rockland won the toss. They deferred. Antelope will be receiving back to receive at his own five yard for the Titans is all everything. A receiver, running back, defensive back, Tyler Winston. But this is going to be a low kick taking it at the 30 and a return of about five yards there for the Titans. Return there is taken by Kyle Aaron there for the Titans. So Titans will go ahead and start their first ever sack there on Logan Webb. As great coverage downfield by the Titans. They've been in man coverage all night long and doing a great job. Not biting on the pump fake there by Logan Webb. So Rock is going to have to punt. And Antelope is going to get some great field position, if not more. Here's... Hand over end are going to go out right at about midfield, but Rockland's going to, Antelope's going to start in Rockland territory with 3.02 to go here in the first quarter. They're going to mark it out at the 44 here of Rockland, and that's where Antelope will go ahead and start. And I think, you know, you have so much in your head, the idea or the knowledge that Tyler Winston can just, break off just about any kick, any kick return, and go to the house. So, on a wise punt for keeping it away there from Winston. But, uh, you know, short change yourself there as they have to start now at the, uh, they give Rock and, Gr I mean, Antelope great field position. So, McCombs down and under center. Here's a handoff to Krippus. Krippus off a tackle. Krippus off into the secondary. Yeah, definitely a great job seeing, uh, you get to see Krippus and all his abilities there. Finding the hole, moving over a little bit, just a uh, really great field vision on that play. And then picking up that first down. You know, we were talking about coming into the ball game here, uh, Brian, of how Antelope, yeah, you are looking at their numbers. They they tend to, their rushing numbers are big. They keep a ba very balanced attack. They and you can see here how how often they you know kind of very even between running and passing. And here's Krippus again, right up the middle, runs over the 
Sell runs over the safety there. Runs right over O'Rourke. Down and side the 20 yard line. Gonna mark him down at the 17 and Jonathan Krippis just took a full head of steam there, Brian, and just was, you know, probably could have cut, you know, and maybe would have had some room and picked up some extra yards, but he saw he saw O'Rourke there and he just wanted to, to put a lick on somebody. Yeah, that was that was power running at its best right there. De definitely a great run by Krippis. McComb sends Winston in motion. It's a counter. Here's a handoff to Rogers coming near near side. And what's one of the great things there about Tyler Winston? I mean, as much as the attention he's gotten here for from Rockland is that they also use him as a decoy. They cleared that side of the field, the weak side of the field there, and were able to use misdirection and run Rogers up that way. And a nice game there by Johnny Rogers of five yards. And you just have so many weapons here. You know, you're focused on Krippus. You're going. Uh, the other direction with Rodgers. I mean, just such a hard team to contain. Krippis, the lone setback, takes a handoff and more of a dive, unable to go out and get anywhere as Rockland just pretty much just plugs up the hole to bring up third and five here from the Rockland 12. Yeah, Joey, and you were talking about the balance there. I mean, this Antelope team averages 209 rushing yards, 175 passing yards every game. Very balanced team. Very, very frustrating to try and stop if you're the defense because it's not like these guys are focused on one thing only. Yeah, one of the, uh, you know, looking at their numbers, one of the, the kind of more surprising, you know, when they fell 20 to nothing there in the first quarter against Whitney, they used their rushing attack to come back. It wasn't, you, normally when teams fall behind like that, they start passing the ball, but uh, they went ahead and came back and wound up uh, rushing for over 300 yards here in that ball game. And we'll go ahead and take the timeout here with 47 and a half seconds to go in the first quarter. And I'll up on the move. They lead right now Rockland Thunder 7 to nothing right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Right, and Play on Sports is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in sports from all across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports live here. Definitely a great place to be for the uh, you know, all these playoff games. Play on Sports is going to be at all of them, all yeah. the way all the way through the championship game. So you stick with us, and and we'll take you all the way there. We've got four weeks of uh, championship football, uh, playoff football coming your way. As I said earlier to, tonight, the winner of this game will go ahead and take on the winner of the Buhat Colony McNair game. But we also, we also have our crew covering the real Linda Vacaville contest as well as Whitney and El Campo tonight. Got crews all over, really covering the Division Two playoff first round in this first round of stacked. So a little bit of big shift here from Coach Ray's team. Here's McCombs, hands off, trying to get around his blockers. Cherry. I'm sorry, that was Johnny Rogers. Looked like a five to me here from, from my angle here. It's, uh, but it was Johnny Rogers there, number six. Able to take it down to inside the 10-yard line, down to the nine. As time winds down here in the first quarter, looks like uh, the Antelope's going to go ahead and try to get this fourth down play off. With eight seconds left, McCombs under center. And we may get a jump here. And good, good, good move there by McCombs for, uh, you know, that, that long cadence kind of changing his cadence there and got Rockland to jump and picks up the first down. And again, uh, mistakes being made here by Rockland. Already a turnover, multiple penalties here against Rockland with 2.2 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. I mean, you've got, you've got, First and goal here for for the, the Titans. That's something you can't do here if you're Rockland. Well, especially with the time running out on the quarter. I mean, it, it almost looked like they were just gonna, you know, just try and get draw them off sides, let the time run out. We head into the second quarter. Uh, instead, they gave them exactly what they wanted. You, you get a little laundry on the field, you give them that cheap first down. 
First and goal now. Three seconds are gonna be put back on the clock. Time will go ahead, they'll go ahead and wind up the clock. And the officials wind three seconds back up on the clock just to wind it down. And we'll go ahead and wind the first quarter down here as well. So after the first quarter of play here in the Division II Sac Joaquin section playoffs, it is Antelope leading Rockland 70 nothing right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Folks, do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Also, Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play On Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Joey, Joey Gonzalez alongside my producer, Brian Hassler. We have Tim King, the one and only great Tim King, bringing you all the pictures here for tonight's ball game. And Antelope threatening here to, to go up uh, 14 to nothing uh, here by to, based on some Rockland mistakes that uh, you know you're not used to seeing a, a team like Rockland making. Well, and it almost I, it almost feels like a kind of like first game jitters. Mm -hmm. You know, t, you know, just those little mental errors, jumping off sides, hit maybe hitting the guy a little too early, getting the pass interference call. Uh, it could be worse, though, than the 7-0 score that we're seeing right now. Uh, that, you know, Antelope had that first drive down where they didn't make anything happen. Uh, they probably should have got a touchdown there, and they'll probably get a touchdown here. So, I mean, it could very well be 21 nothing rather than, uh, you know, whatever the point total is going to be after this current drive. Not exactly sure what the situation is here. Uh, The, we finished the first quarter, but for whatever reason, Rockland is going back to their, yeah, their the, you know, teams have not switched sides of the field here yet. And I'm not exactly sure what happened. The official called for the wind down on the clock. It was three seconds. He wanted the three seconds to, you know, put back on the clock, but then he gave a signal to wind the clock there, Brian. Um, so I, I gotta say, I, I'm confused. And, and so hopefully we're gonna get some clarification here. Yeah, this is this is definitely interesting. This is not something you're used to. Uh, normally, the quarter ends and it's the quarter. So I'm kind of curious to see what they're doing with this because they should be on the other end of the field right now. Yeah, it, it looks like uh, some of the Titans are a little. Uh, you know, the Titans might be a little confused here as Coach Ray is bringing his uh, his team all the way back to the other end of the field. Maybe the uh, the refs just wanted to get in a little <laughs> extra cardio. Run, you know, these players are running all yeah. night. They run down the one side. Well, if I'm if, I, if I'm both of these teams, I'm saying, you know, hey, what's what's the deal here? I mean, it's a cold night. You're making me expend all this uh, unneeded, unnecessary energy. Yeah, this so. is this is a little reminiscent of the uh, the the touchception that we saw with the replacement refs in the <laughs> NFL. I'm kind of I'm hoping these guys know what they're doing. So to bring up. They're going to go ahead and mark the ball right at the five-yard line. So first and goal here from the Rockland five. Well, that would be nice because that would have made it real easy to begin with. But okay, those were in the second quarter. <laughs> and see our public address announcer goes ahead. And the officials looking, making sure everyone's set. And so we're going to go ahead and get the second quarter underway here. So... McCombs under center, split backs in the backfield. This one to Krippis. Krippis able to dive. Going to be close. They're going to call him, mark him short here of the goal. Bring up second and goal from the one. He, he ran out of steam there just a little bit right before he uh, right before he was able to get to that goal line. So they're marking at the one, unable to get to pass the, unable to break the plane there. So same formation here for the Titans. 
And this one's gonna be a keeper here by McCombs, but there is gonna be a false start penalty called on the Titans. So this one's gonna come back on the false start to legal procedure call. So we'll push him back five yards back to the six yard line. You know, and that's what happens. Sometimes you'll see that play. You know, I, McCombs trying to get a, trying to get a quick snap here, Brian, and the you know, center not uh, able to get it to him. And so you generally, I mean, that's where you get that. Uh, everything goes based on when that ball is snapped. Yeah. yeah. And they just looked like they were a little bit off on that one. The spread formation here sends Winston in motion. Krippis inside give. Scrambles up on right through the middle, and they're going to mark him down. They're going to mark him down. Looks to me about the three or four yard line. Down marker is. They're going to mark a third and goal from the three, and Rockland doing a good job here of holding. And so you got to see it. You got to imagine if if Rockland can hold on this third down and force Antelope to kick a field goal. I mean, that's that's almost a victory here for, oh, yeah, for that, Rockland. That, that is a huge stop if they can make that happen. And it's all dependent here on this. To Krippus, Krippus, or Vincent, I'm sorry, Vincent able to dive across the plane and gets his second touchdown of the night for the Titans. Titus Vincent, a three-yard run. Titus Vincent's three-yard run puts Antelope up 13 to nothing, pending the extra point, and just taking it off tackle there. Finding the hole and able to punch it in the three yards, you know, the short stocky Vincent. As... Joe Estrada comes on for the extra point and able to knock it right through the uprights. So with 10 minutes and 10, 10, 10 to go here in the second quarter, Antelope takes a two-score lead. They lead the Rockland Thunder 14 to nothing right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Folks, do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the one you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web for more information go to playonsports.com slash sbp so i gotta say early on it looks like rock has been doing a good job defensively there and keying in on on uh, on mccombs and making him less of a threat but uh, the thing about uh, antelope is they've got so many weapons they've, they're very athletic they got speed on the edges and uh, it looks like uh, they have no answer. Rockland, at least early on, they have not been able to find an answer for the rest of these Antelope playmakers here, Brian. Rockland finds a seam as able to take it all the way out. Mitchell Kinsey take it all the way out. A good return there by Mitchell Kinsey takes it down to the 40, about the 46, 47 yard line. Yeah, that was definitely needed by Rockland. Uh, they've just been getting punched in the mouth this whole uh, first quarter plus, you know, two minutes. So it's great to, you know, they show some heart. They show some intensity there, get the ball out near midfield. Great starting position for their offense. About a 37-yard return there for, uh, for Rockland. Inside handoff. This one taken in up the middle there by Kendall. Candle taking it near midfield. About three yard carry. Brings up second down. And that, that antelope defense, they uh, they jumped on that run real quick. You can see these guys are definitely on their toes. They're, uh, they're keeping an eye on both things, doing a great job of keeping Rockland in check uh, when Rockland when has that ball. So Antelope has taken advantage of a Rockland turnover or an interception there by Logan Webb. Here's Logan Webb again, looking downfield. Find, oh, a pass is dropped. And you cannot afford to do that. Pass was dropped there by Dominic Gimpoli. And Dominic Gimpoli, you know, it's a rare drop there by, by Dominic. He leads the Thunder with 806 yards receiving uh, coming into the Dice ball game. 
but yeah. something you can't afford to do here when you're when you're just trying to get back into the ball game. No, I mean, right. and that that pass probably wouldn't have given them a first down, but it was a good five six yard pass. It makes it third and one, very manageable. Now you're looking at third and seven, and against this defense, that's not a gimme. GM Pauly coming in with 49 receptions on the on this gear. Webb sets up the screen and just ran, throws it right to the wide open. Tyrus the defender that was Isaiah Ellis. Isaiah Ellis on the coverage. Try to set up a bubble screen there, Brian. And Logan Webb did not see Isaiah Ellis just step right in front of the receiver. Oh, yeah, they weren't buying that screen. I mean, you saw the obligatory guy come in, uh, almost kind of fool the quarterback into thinking, okay, I'm getting some heat. I'll dump it off to my guy. And they weren't, you, you could tell the defense was not biting on that one. Their guy set up perfectly great interception. Rockland playing very unlike Rockland like here so far. Logan Webb throwing a second interception here of the night to give the Titans good field position as they hand off up the middle by Johnny Rogers. Really doesn't go anywhere, maybe a couple of yards, if any. Brings up uh, second and nine there for the Titans. And very unlike Logan Webb coming into the night, Logan Webb had only thrown four interceptions. He's done, he's thrown half of those here in this one ball game. Yeah, so, and, and again, like, you know, like I was saying, it, it does seem like there's some first game jitters here. Uh, you know, these guys, the, both teams are very good teams. They've been playing all season. They've developed some continuity and there's just a lot of mistakes out here you don't expect to see in, this, in the tournaments. Yeah, absolutely. Antelope really playing with the, like a well-oiled machine and Rockland coming with a little bit of kinks in it. Here's McCombs intended for Winston off his hands as he was under pressure. And McCombs a little slow to get up, but able to uh, shake the cobwebs off. And we'll bring up third and nine here. And uh, uh, again, I, I cannot, you know, I cannot, uh, you know, uh, emphasize it enough here, Brian. But uh, you know, if you, if you're rocking, I almost, you know, you got to say you have to hold them yeah. here on this third down. Yeah, th this is a must stop. You can't allow more points. Look for Winston to just uh, run the uh, go route here right up the field. He's looking for him. McCombs coming out. McCombs finds Winston, oh, and that's what makes Winston so good. A one-handed grab right out the sky. Tyler Winston making something happen out of nothing. Big gain here for the Titans. And you can hear the oohs and ahs. And normally it's a quiet press box, but the press box really getting lively here after that remarkable, stunning play there by Tyler Winston. Oh, yeah. I mean, that Rockland had to be feeling good about that. You got the quarterback on the run. You got the pressure on. He throws a high throw. Really hard to do anything about a great one-handed grab. Yeah, if you're the Thunder, you know where the ball's going. You know exactly where McCombs is going to go. And that's what makes Winston so good because there's nothing you can do. Uh, you know, there was nothing you could do to stop him. You knew where the ball was going, but Tyler Winston able to come up big, help his, help his quarterback out, come back and give him a, a route, uh, give him an area to throw to, and Tyler Winston coming up with a big reception. Um, but uh, they do come up here with a – False start penalty, a little bit of excitement there on that very athletic play there by Tyler Winston. And you can see why on that play alone there, Brian, why Tyler Winston has got so many options here after the season as far as to where he's going to play at the next level. McCombs under center. Pitch back here to Vincent. Vincent looking for a lane and able to be able to get brought down there by Patrick Ryan. Patrick Ryan making the touchdown saving tackle possibly there. A couple of uh, yards gained there for Vincent. Brings up second and second, second and 11. About 11, yep. Seems like every time Vincent touches the ball, he's getting into the end zone. So uh, Ryan definitely saved them from you know having that become a habit this night. Well, I just see two rushes, two touchdowns for Tyler, <laughs> for Titus Vincent as Coach Matt Ray will decide to take the timeout and Antelope will go ahead and take their first timeout here, or second timeout, I'm sorry, second timeout here on the ball game. We'll do the same here at 7.40 to go here in the first quarter, in the first half, I'm sorry, 
And the bleeds, Rockland, 14 to nothing. Your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Folks, Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play On Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Definitely keep with us as we uh, head through these, this, these playoffs and these huge games. Yeah, absolutely. We got, and we said we've got a lot of stuff happening here in the next couple of days. We've got more playoff football here to, tomorrow night. We've got uh, Kasum, Christian Brothers at Kasumna Soaks. That's in Division Three, And we've got soccer. It's in Divi soccer in Division 7, 3, and 1 all tomorrow afternoon, all from Kasumna Soaks. So make sure you keep it tuned right here to CIF, TV, and the Play On Sports Network. So Antelope comes back out on the field. Here's McCombs looking, finds a wide open receiver with a 17-yard touchdown pass to Nick Golovko. Nick Golovko, the tight end there for the Titans, comes in with a 17-yard grab. And Antelope trying to put it the Thunder away early here. And that uh, glove coat was wide open. There was nobody within five yards of him. Uh, kind of interesting to see how he was able to block his, you know, put up a block and then just sneak right out there. And that's exactly, I mean, that's, that's Antelope's ball game. That's, that's what they play, you know, a pro style set. They feature the tight end. They do a lot of play action and to keep the defense off balance. And it's worked out here so far tonight. I mean, giving them a 21-point lead. So 7.35 to go here in the first half as Antelope is on the move. They lead Rockland 21 to nothing. your destination for high school sports, play on sports.com. But I guess we'll keep it right here. We'll keep we'll it keep right it. here. You know, I mean, just interesting. I, I got to say, you know, following Rockland, coming out of the, the Sierra Foothill League, it's a, it's a tough, very tough league. Uh, Brian and I know you live up in that area and so you you know you, you follow the teams up in that area a lot and, and just surviving that uh, that league sometimes gives you some some credo coming into the uh, oh, coming yeah. into the playoffs but uh, you know yeah, the I mean, best season to date here for Antelope Antelope's best season ever at nine and one they're showing that uh, they are a legitimate threat here in division two so far handling Rockland like this yeah with the talent they have on offense the different weapons they have these guys are definitely a threat to go a long way. They're able to cover the kickoff uh, quickly. There was Brazil as Mitchell Kinsey trying to find daylight on the return, but takes it. They're going to mark it at the 23. Well, and, it, and it is with Rockland. I mean, they were a 5-5 five and five team. They were four points away from being 7-3. and three. So the... You know, these guys are definitely a talented team. They've got some good players. Uh, they're a lot better than their records suggest. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, tonight they're not playing up to that level that they have this season. You know, these teams have played a lot of close games here as the ball was tipped there intended for Jim Pauly. But the teams have played, you know, both teams have played a lot of close games here, you know, this season. You know, just a bounce one way and, and Antelope could be 10-0 and 0, um, against, you know, the, the bounce went the Rio Lindo's way, but as they lost 15 to 15 to 13 against uh, Rio Lindo. Well, and then to respond with a seven game winning streak, yeah. that's, you know, that, that shows a good team. Coach Ray has really been putting a program. Logan Webb as Jim Pauly had beaten his defender. Pass was a little high, but it was definitely still catchable. Jim Pauly, yeah, not it, it was. You know, you get that to the old adage that is if it if it hits your hands, you should come down with it. It was high, but yeah, you can see the the just the strength there in Logan Webb's arm. I mean, he really zings it uh, out there. If he can just find his receiver, get his feet set, uh, yeah, and complete some of these passes, you know, I mean, it, it could be a, a, a different ball game. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, you know, the Logan Webb 
fight, looking for Gianpoli again. Able to get, to, and this time Gianpoli able to come down with it. I mean, great throw there. He had four defenders around him. Somehow he, he had four defenders around him, but he had a couple yards each right. way yeah. of, you know, uh, of cushioning him to do what he needed to do. And throw again, a little high, but great receivers come down with catches like that. Yeah, he went to Gianpoli three times there. Third time was the charm, and Gianpoli able to to come down with it to convert the first down when they needed to convert that, you know, convert the third down, I should say, when they were needing uh, a big third down conversion. Logan Webb in shotgun formation. This spreads out the wide receivers. Gets, he's under pressure, looking for a room to run. Gets a block. I thought there was a flag, so it might be a block in the back. This one may be coming back, Brian. And Webb definitely took a shot there, so you you almost feel bad for him because there's going to be a penalty there going one way or the other, and he it almost seems like he took an unnecessary shot. You never want your quarterback yeah. taking a hit like that. Yeah, it was a high a hit to the head, so a personal foul. And it did look violent from, you know, from our vantage point, from my vantage point. So a 15-yard penalty moves the Thunder down into Titan territory, puts him at the 40-yard line. Well, First and ten. This is Rockland. this is very important. They've got to get some points here. Uh, I know it's a little early in the game to say this is a must-score drive, but this is a must-score drive when you're down three touchdowns. Yeah, absolutely. They've got some momentum here going for them, and they cannot allow the the play the drive to die. As Kendall able to look looking to get something going here. Another flag on the play. We'll have to see what this the call is here. Another personal foul. This one a face oh, wow. mask against Antelope. Back to back personal foul penalties, and those are killers. And so Rockland catching a break here. You know they got uh, they were gifted essentially gifted 30 yards here by the Titans defense and, and very un you know Titan like. Well, and that's an unnecessary penalty. They had the runner stuffed. Uh, he had nowhere to go. You see him bounce outside. They, their guys moved right in front of them. They kept them contained. Uh, if you're a coach, you're definitely frustrated about that because that was an unnecessary 15-yard penalty. Yeah, I mean, you never you, – one thing you don't want to do with a lead like this, I mean, you do not want to give a, a dying team momentum. And Rockland playing with a little bit of momentum here. Here's Logan Webb looking down to the end zone. Touchdown, Jim Pauly. Dominic Giampoli coming down with a 25-yard touchdown grab for the Thunder, and Logan Webb redeeming himself on that drive, setting his feet, uh, throwing a nice tight spiral into the end zone. Giampoli jumping up for it, comes down, and Rockland on the board for the first time tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You knew who he, who he was throwing to. We knew. The defense knew, and still he got it in there. Great pass, great catch. So 6.27 to go here in the first half. Rockland is on the board. They're still trailing, however, as Antelope leads the Thunder 21-7 to right here on your destination for high school sports. Play on sports.com. Play on sports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Play on sports.com. High school sports live here. And Joey, I, uh, the one thing that was uh, very important on that drive is not only did Rockland score, which they had to do, but they didn't really take a lot of time off the clock. Uh, the, the penalties kept the, you know, 15 yards, clock stays stopped. 15 yards, clock stays stopped. Uh, so anytime you're doing something like that, you're giving them uh, more yardage than they deserve, and you're keeping that clock stopped. So they were able to put ten, you know, seven points on the board and maybe only take a minute and a half off the clock. Yeah, absolutely. You're 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 absolutely correct. As this kick was taken out at about the 15-yard line, DJ Holland said able to stay on his feet through the crowd. Takes it out to the 25, a 10-yard return. But uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, uh, they had big. You know, they 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 passed the entire drive. You know, except for that one run there to Kendall. The rest were all passes, and uh, they had taken that. I mean, it was 
You know, they, it was they, just they a fast trap. Them. Yeah, they put they put they push Antelope back. Push them to third and ten, and then just allow a big pass, and then some big penalties. Here's Vincent. Vincent sweeping the far side. Yeah, they they had that play figured out. They sniffed that one out right away. You see the way the defenders converged on him. Uh, you didn't have a chance on that one. Maybe if you're Barry Sanders, you figure out a way to squeeze out a couple yards there, but uh, your average human being is going to, if he's lucky, get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 here from the Antelope 26. 5.50 to go here in the first half. Joey Gonzalez alongside Brian Hasser producing. Tim King bringing you all the pictures here tonight. And Blitz coming pressure as McCombs goes down. That, that looked Abercrombie like Abercrombie coming up on the, uh, on the sack there for the Thunder. But uh, you, I'm sorry, yeah, you were saying they're right. That, that looked like a broken play. Uh, you know, looks like McCombs backs up. He's looking to hand the ball off. He almost runs into his running back. And then he's looking around surrounded by white jerseys. Uh, I don't I don't imagine that's how they drew that play up. No, no, I, I agree with you there. So Rock and getting some momentum here now facing third and 16 is Antelope. Rockland picking up some steam here. You know, imagine what that drive did to to the Thunders Mo momentum. Looking for tries of looking for McCall Winston on that uh, possession and McCombs had to throw it out of bounds. So that's going to force Antelope to punt here for the first time tonight. And a good defensive possession there by Rockland, able to hold him three and out. And, you know, and there's no better way to follow up a big score, you know, a big scoring drive like the last one for Rockland than to, to hold your, you know, your, your opponent to a three and out. Well, especially you got four minutes and 46 seconds left in the half. Plenty of time. Rockland's got two timeouts. Plenty, you know, things are looking good for them. They can definitely close this lead if they keep doing what they're doing. So Holland's head back to punt. He's going to send this one. This is going to be going to remain in uh, Antelope territory. So good starting field position here for Rockland. And all of a sudden, you know, momentum swung Rockland's way. And one thing I want to bring up here is if anybody should know about momentum, I mean, Antelope picked up momentum. They fell behind 20 to nothing last week against Whitney. Uh, and we're able to come back from a 20 to nothing first quarter deficit uh, to come back, storming back, and, and eventually win the ball game and win the title outright, the Capital Athletic League title. So Antelope has some history on their side, knowing what can happen when a team starts a game with steam. Here's Logan Webb, shock information. GM Pauly on the reception, about a five yard grab. Johnny Rogers there on the tackle for the Titans. Second and we'll bring up about second and seven here. Well, yeah, the, not uh, you know under. not not a breakaway play, but again you get positive yardage. Just keep the ball moving. Try to keep that momentum going your way, uh, as it has been for the last few minutes for Rockland. Logan Webb empty bat with an empty backfield. Receivers go deep, kind of set up. The pass was intended there. Pass was intended there for Daniel Niffin. Another, Daniel Niffin who another drop pass. And that, the, these drop passes, uh, that, that's almost inexcusable, some of these drops. They're right in their hands. Uh, these guys have been playing all season. That, that issue should have been taken care of in the first couple games of the season. Logan Webb back under, back in uh, shotgun formation. He's been bam playing from the shotgun all night long. Able to throw it on the run, finds Jim Pauly out to the 30. I'm gonna actually mark him down at the 31. Always, always a great thing to see when you see a right-handed quarterback running full speed to his left and still nailing the guy right in the jersey, well, right between the numbers with that throw. Yeah, a couple of things on that. It was, uh, the, there was a, the, the velocity that he threw, was able to throw that with. The, you know, it was a tight spiral, really z zinged it in there. Uh, I mean, just the ability there of Logan Webb to throw that on the run, going the opposite way was, was just remarkable. There's yeah. Webb under pressure. 
Webb able to get flushed out. He's going in positive yards. He's able to get some first down and more. He's looking, gets all the way down to the inside of the 15, down to the 12. And Logan Webb, just uh, great athleticism. And Rockland storming back here. And now it looks like uh, the Thunder is starting to get the Titans on their heels. Well, again, a great job by Webb. Defense falls back. All the receivers are covered. I'll just run it. You know, you're going to give me that kind of open field. Definitely a quarterback with his abilities and talent. He'll take it. Offset eye here for the Thunder. Kendall goes right up the middle, just short of the goal line, but inside the five there for the Thunder. They're going to mark it at the four-yard line. It might, they're going to bring up second and three. So... Rockin able to pick up the first down without having to get the touchdown. Here's Kendall. Kendall right up the middle. Dives. Hollings head on the tackle there for the Titans, but they're going to mark it down at the two. And we'll see where they mark it. See if this is, looks like it should be enough for a first down. And officials, yeah, officials go ahead and give them the first down. So going to be first and goal here from the two. Well, a great, great job by Rockland of taking some time off the clock. You definitely want to score, but you don't want to leave Antelope with too much time to come back and put points of their own on the board. Uh, so this is a really great methodical drive by Rockland just to keep the ball moving, keep the clock moving, and now you're two yards out from another touchdown. Yeah, a drive that started on the Antelope 48. Here's Kendall right up the middle. A hat comes off, and that's Kendall's hat. And a big stop there by Antelope, really coming up big on that play, on that stop. And Kendall, because he lost his hat, so he's gonna have to come off the, off the field there for the one play. It almost looked like there was a couple players there that lost their helmets. Yeah, it looks to me it was also Mark Lee the offensive lineman there for the Thunder. So brings up second and goal. Logan Webb, even interesting, even this far down in the uh, goal to go. Here's Logan Webb looking to pass. Finds his receiver. Touchdown, Thunder. Jared, Am Am Jared Amater, Amater able to... Uh, Take the two-yard touchdown grab from Logan Webb and Rockland, just like that. Two remarkable drives here by the Thunder has put them back in this ball game. Amateur, the linebacker slash tight end here for the Thunder, showing blocking there, Brian, and able to release out into the end zone and and able to pick up the touchdown for the Thunder. So with a minute 16 to go here in the first half, it's kind of crowd is somewhat quieted down here at Titan Stadium, but Titan still leading the Rockland Thunder 21 to 14 right here at your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Folks, Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play On Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash play on network keep with keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports play on sports.com definitely a big drive there joey uh you know moving the ball there's a minute 16 left on the clock uh, in the half i'm interested to see what antelope's going to do here whether they're just going to you know kind of kneel on it and go into halftime with the lead or try and add to that lead with the time they have left Yeah, Jared Amateur coming up with his uh, sixth. It's Amateur coming up with the his seventh touchdown of the season and his second. I'm sorry, the sixth, seventh catch of the season and second touchdown of uh, of the season as well. 
But uh, as we saw, the kickoff goes out of bounds, and you know, Antelope is going to go ahead and make uh, Rockland re-kick this. That's kind of interesting. I, I would almost think, especially if you're trying to score, you're going to take that, you know, what is it, the 35-yard line? You're going to take the ball at the 35, and, you know, that gives you a lot less yardage to have to attain before you can go for a field goal. Well, they uh, want to give, they're trying to keep it out of the hands there of uh, Tyler Winston. And so they're going to kick it short here, and uh, you just want to get more yardage. Here's Hollingshead again, picks it up inside around his own 20. Gets a full head of steam, breaks out into the open field. He's got one man to beat. He's down. And finally jogged down inside the Rockland 20. And DJ Hollingshead able to pick up that short kick and storm up the field. And that's what happens when you have a weapon like Tyler Winston setting up there in the backfield. And so, and then there we go. We were, you know, Coach Ray trying to, to force Rockland to kick it short and, and kick it to his up man. So he has an opportunity to return it. So Rockland able, you know, Antelope able to take it all the way down to the 18. So a minute five to go here in Antelope. And all that, trying to get into all, the that, all that momentum that Rockland built up looks like it just kind of went out the window after a play like that. Let's see here if their defense can hold. They're going to get a whistle here. Flag on the play. It's a false start here against Antelope. Now push him back five yards. Brings up first and 15 here from the from the Rockland 23. So here is McCombs back into the huddle. Combs under center and I antelope set up in the eye. Pitch back here. Johnny Rogers drops oh. the ball. And I think, we'll see. It looks like Rockland had jumped on it first. That is Rockland ball. And there we go. All that momentum. You know, it's too early. You're calling it here a little too early, Brian. But, uh, you know, momentum just, you know, Rockland able to withstand and get some of Johnny Rogers' fingertips. I was unable to see who came up with the ball uh, for Rockland, but Rockland come up. And the first turnover there for Antelope is a costly one. And we've seen that a couple times tonight. Uh, it seemed, you know, they'll pitch the ball out to the running back. Uh, both sides, it seems like the ball just bounces right off their hands. Here is a uh, conversation here by the officials. I think the discussion here is whether or not Rockland was able to recover the ball if, you know, while still in bounds or if the ball had gone out of bounds before uh, any Thunder player was able to recover it. You know, the signal was Rockland ball, but uh, the discussion, you know, Coach Ray wanting to, to have the officials talk about it to make sure that, uh, that the call will stand. And it appears that it will. So NL brings out their defense. Rockland well, now with a chance here. And, and when you got a quarterback like Logan Webb, uh, you have an opportunity here to run uh, the length, get the length of the field here. You know the way that they've been throwing, the way they've been there in and out, and that that first drive that they had, they were you know just a minute plus uh, is how long it took them. Well, yeah, you got 56 seconds. You got two timeouts. Uh, any kind of points you can get out of this would be huge. And yeah, I I was definitely wrong on that one. Uh, the, the momentum did not go out the window. It was just uh, so yeah, a little delayed. It was tempting. <laughs> yeah, I was delayed. So. Rockland will go ahead and take over here on the fumble recovery. Three turnovers here on the night, two by Rockland, one here by Antelope, and each one of these turnovers has really been uh, costly for, well, the, the two were costly here for Rockland. Well, they're giving the ball back to Antelope. Okay, so my mistake, so what must have happened is that the ball was, uh, ball went out of bounds there and before Rockland was able to recover. So brings up uh, 
yardage marker, down marker shows first down, but it should be second down, second yeah. and 23 here from the uh, Rockland 32. So we'll see here if Rockland can hold. Here comes the blitz. McCombs just sends it up to Ellis, and there, oh, unable to come down with the interception. Oh, was yeah. Joseph King there for Rockland? That was right in his hands. It looked like he was going to come down with that and uh, definitely save this team from allowing any more points. Uh, that, I mean, great defense to play to not allow the touchdown, but if you're Rockland, you definitely wish he would have been able to come up with that. That's all right. I thought, uh, looking at the number... I'm sorry, that was number, it looked like a 28, but no, that's uh, number 20, Andrew, Go Andrew Goinech for the Thunder, who uh, unable to come up with that interception. Four wide receivers here. Here's McCombs right across the middle of the field. Dangerous pass picked off here by Rockland. Brought down from behind. Max O'Rourke coming up with the interception as McCombs throws his first pick of the night and kills a drive right then and there. It seemed like, uh, it seemed like Antelope was bound and determined to turn that ball over. Uh, uh, they, they, the first one was just a, a floater. He just put too much under yeah. it, you know, and, and this time throwing it right into you know triple coverage you're right in the middle of the field dangerous pass yeah. there for for McCombs I mean you, you got your run, your running back fumbles the ball you're fortunate that you don't turn it over you throw a floater that you're lucky doesn't get picked and then this one uh, so they, they they seem pretty pretty confident to turn the ball over there so 38 seconds to go here for the Thunder let's see if Thunder can put this one in here's Logan Webb decides gonna decide to run this one brought down from behind by Ray Cherry and Ray Cherry's determined. He's pumped there, understanding that he needs to keep Rockland from scoring. Rockland as Rockland takes their timeout. That's their and second timeout, so they got one to go. 31 seconds remaining. Uh, kind of interested to see what they'd want to do here, if they want to try and get some kind of deep pass and at least set up for a field goal, or if... Uh, uh, you know, if they want to really try and go for the end zone. I mean, right now you got 30, you got half a minute, and you got one timeout, and barring some kind of fortunate penalty call going your way, uh, it's definitely a long shot for them to put some points on the board here. So what was shaping up to be just a antelope uh, route here in the first half has really come, turned out to be a, a great contest here as Rockland has scored two and un 14 unanswered to uh, give us a 21-14 score here just before, before halftime. And I, ju just with the way the turnovers have gone, I, if I was Rockland, I might be tempted just to take a knee here and say, hey, you know, we came back, we were down 21, we're down seven, we've had some good momentum going our way. Let's not do anything to, to cause any problems heading into the half. So coming up, make sure you folks stay tuned here to the post-game halftime show. We're going to get you, give you some analysis here on this game and plus give you some scores from games around the area. Here's Logan Webb. Pass complete here. Daniel Niffin there, able to come up with the reception. Daniel, Daniel Niffin does just about everything here for the Thunder. The rushes, he runs, he'll throw sometimes, he'll catch. Just the do-all talent here for the Thunder. On the, the unfortunate part of that play there, it's a seven-yard pass, but he doesn't get out of bounds. Uh, it's not a first down, so it doesn't stop the clock for them to you know, reset the chains. Uh, so unfortunately, you lose another you know, eight or nine seconds until you call a timeout because your guy couldn't get out of bounds. Fourteen seconds left here in the first half. Joey Gonzalez alongside Ryan Hassler. Yes. Giving you some scores from the other around the area. Last update that we had at halftime. Granite Bay leading Napa thirty one to nothing. At the half, about six minutes ago, Del Oro leading 
the number 15 seed Del Oro leading uh, the number two seed Yuba City 31 to 14. Uh, it's, it's one of those situations though where Del Oro probably isn't really a, a, a number 15 seed. Here's Logan Webb, shotgun formation. Looking deep, looking for Niffin. Caught up, thrown up for grabs for Niffin. However, Niffin out of bounds. Pass will be incomplete. So six seconds on the clock. Time for one more play here for the Thunder. Brings up fourth and three here for, for the Thunder. Oh, yeah, and you definitely want to go for it here. Just make sure you're not doing some kind of quick pass that allows any time on the clock. Uh, you know, Antelope still has one timeout, so the last thing you want to do is uh, give them another shot at this. But uh, I would definitely see, I would definitely say go for it, throw it deep, and see what you can come up with. Folsom leading Atwater 28 to 12 at the halftime. About 10 minutes ago, Intercom leading. Manteca 20 to 14 at the half. We're just nearing halftime here in this ball game. As Walker's gonna go ahead and take the delay of game. Logan Webb set back to punt. Yeah, I, this brings up an interesting, you know, this is, to me it's a, a an interesting play call. Yeah, you wonder why why Rockland decides decided not to, to punt. Now they're going to go ahead and punt this one away as time will run down here. And Winston just moves away from the ball, and that's going to do it here as the ball is down. We got flags on the play at the end of the play. Not sure what happened. And we're going to keep it here as we'll see what happened. Uh, yeah, it just sound, looked like it was just raining flags there on the far sideline there, uh, Ryan. It's been raining flags all night. I, I, uh, all the games we've covered this season, I don't think I've seen this many flags in one half. Uh, so it's, uh, there's definitely been a lot of flags on the field, a whole lot of different calls, and I'm, uh, I just haven't seen this many all season long. My guess it's going to be a, it is a personal foul against Antelope and it's declined there uh, it's going to be declined there by Rockland so that's going to do it the end of the first half as Rockland leads I'm sorry as Rockland as Antelope leads uh, Rockland 21 to 14 right here we'll be back in a few minutes with the playonsports.com halftime show don't go anywhere it's Friday Night Football on playonsports.com your destination for high school sports We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. 
Camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. 
beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School. Welcome to the PlayOnSports.com halftime show, coming to you from a Titan Stadium in Antelope, California. I'm Joey Gonzalez, alongside my producer Brian Hassler. Our halftime score is the Antelope Titans 21 and the Rockland uh, Thunder 14. And early on here, Brian, I'll just kind of get your thoughts. Early on, it looked like uh, Antelope was almost setting up for a blowout. They went up 21 to nothing. But uh, an impressive drive, two impressive drives here by the Thunder, storming back uh, 14 unanswered uh, to, to make this a, a tight ball game here 21, at 21-14. Well, yeah, and, and uh, definitely turnovers and penalties are the two things that have really stood out this half uh, for both teams. Um, that 21 nothing lead should have been bigger. Uh, that first touchdown that Rockland scored was aided by uh, two 15-yard penalties, stopped the clock from moving, kept the ball moving. And then at the end there, you know, uh, Antelope gets a great kickoff return and ends up turning the ball over. And so, right. again, another opportunity to even even if all they put on is a field goal. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the way I see it, it's a lot of like shooting themselves in the foot type situations. I mean, and, and that's really kind of like what we've seen. Logan Webb, you know, uh, throw a couple of through a couple of picks and that set up, you know, 14 points here for uh, the Titans. And uh but penalties have also penalties on the antelope side have really kind of hurt them. They've had three personal foul penalties, two of them were on that one drive, and then one here to end the end the first half. Rockland wound up declining, but uh, you know it wasn't going to be a personal foul, a 15-yard penalty. Oh yeah, and and the penalties there. Uh, Rockland's had a couple drop passes. Uh, there, it's just been, uh, you know, both teams have had their moments of just really great football. And then there are moments of kind of first night jitters almost. And that, that's what's kept the teams so close together on the scoreboard uh, when either team could really have taken advantage of these mistakes and hold a commanding lead right now. Some of the uh, more recent, give you some of the more recent scores here from around the area right now. Intercom leading Manteca 20 to 14 at the half. That's a Division Three, uh, as well as Argonaut leading Houston. 28 to 7. That's about ready. They're about ready to start the third quarter there. Probably should have started the third quarter there at this point. Uh, Legrand and Rio Vista. Legrand leading Rio Vista 14 to 12 at the half. Trying to get you the score here. But if you had Colony McNair game as winner of this game, we'll go ahead and take on uh, that, uh, the winner of that game, depending on uh, who the higher seed is. You know, we'll go ahead and host that. Uh, but that's going to uh, do it for the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Friday Night Football will return in just a few moments with the start of the second half right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away.
away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One match away from immortality. This is You're watching PlayOnSports.com's presentation of Friday Night Football live from Antelope, California. I'm Joe Gonzalez, joined with my producer Brian Hassler. The Antelope Titans lead the Rockland Thunder 21 to 14 as we get ready to start the second half of action. And right now, I'll go ahead and bring in uh, Brian and just get his final thoughts here uh, of the first half. And kind of, uh, well, actually, let's get your thoughts here on on. Uh, you know, what does Rockland, uh, what does Antelope need to do to kind of uh, get back, take back control here of this ball game? Well, you got to eliminate penalties and you got to eliminate turnovers. I mean, that's just both teams, the penalties and the turnovers have been killers. I know it's cliche, everybody says it, but that, that really has been the thing that's hurt both teams, uh, especially now uh, we are starting to get that long predicted rain oh, yeah. coming in. Saying, yeah. uh, so that, that will definitely be interesting to see if that has any effect on either team. But be, these penalties and turnovers are just killing both sides. They're killing momentum. They're allowing the other team to stay in it. And that, that is one thing that you got to get rid of and get out of your system. They've had a whole half. Hopefully both teams are calmed down and they're, they're ready to focus and play to their potential. It is time to break out the umbrellas. And you can see them across the field as the rain is starting to fall here. Um, so if you're Rockland here, Brian, I mean, how does Rockland, you know, uh, they, they wound down the first half. Um, they wound up the first half uh, with a, uh, you know, with some momentum. How do they maintain the momentum? Well, I, I just like the idea of keeping the ball in Logan Webb's hands. Uh, this kid's a playmaker. He can create. Uh, I mean, we saw it. He could run. He could throw. Uh, you know, and he's definitely got the ability and the, the football smarts where you give him the ball and you let him create and do what he can do. Uh, you know, yeah, the turnovers hurt, but 
when the pressure was on, when they needed to score, he definitely moved that ball down the field. Uh, so for Rockland, you know, keep the ball in his hand. Uh, he, he knows how to get the ball to the, the playmakers on the team and, you know, just try to keep that Antelope offense off the field. Yeah, and, you know, for me, you know, if you're Antelope, while you've been able to maintain, you know, get, take out, go out to this big uh, 21 to nothing lead um, without having to go to uh, Tyler Tyler Winston too often, I think now this is this is an opportunity. I mean, if you fall behind again here, uh, you know, fall behind here. You, one of the thing, one of the ways that you want you can regain that momentum and pick up the momentum is if McCombs can can hook up with uh, Winston a couple, you know, uh, a, a few more times here. But what uh, McCombs is going to need to do is is going to need to stop airing out these passes. I mean, some of those those last couple of passes were, you know, the last one was picked off. The one right before that could have been picked off. He put just too much underneath it. Well, and even um, even so that just great be tight. That, that great one handed grab by Winston was again one of those that he got under it a little. He aired it out a little. Winston made a great adjustment, right. great one-hand grab, but almost a little unnecessary if he's not putting so much on the football and letting it hang up in the air so much. McCombs has come a long way. He's only a junior, but uh, really going to need to um, kind of you know tighten up, uh, tighten up those you know nicks and you know, you know, knickknack you know situations because uh, one thing that you need to do here in the playoffs is you you need to execute, and that's what comes down what it comes down to. You can have a great game plan. And all the game plan you 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 know game plan all week, but if you're not able to execute, you know it uh, puts you back in a in a deep hole here. Um, so Antelope, uh, being as Antelope had or Rockland had um, deferred, uh, Rockland will go ahead and, and get possession here. We'll have first dibs, first crack at the football. They'll go ahead and come out to re to receive as they had deferred and had kicked off here to start the ball game. Well, and really, yeah, and really quite incredible for Rockland that you fall down 21 to nothing. And if you can make something happen on this first drive of the second half, you could conceivably be tied up. Yeah. I mean, and that, that, that is, that's a huge momentum builder right there to go from 21 down or, you know, third quarter tied. Well, and, what, and Antelope knows very well um, how, how narrow a lead a 21 nothing can, can seem, especially early in a ball game. Uh, as they came back last week against Whitney, falling back behind 20 to nothing. So you would think if you're Coach Ray, you kind of want to drive home that point. The, you know, remember where you were last week. You know, this team can go ahead and, you know, and, and, and has the ability. Uh, Rockland has the capabilities, you know, uh, to, to come back, you know, with that type of, uh, you know, from that type of a deficit, especially behind a quarterback like Logan Webb, uh, who is just an incredible talent here for the Thunder. So uh, you've got 12 minutes here on the quarter as Joe Estrada is going to get set to kick off here. The second half here in the Division II uh, opening round of the Sac Joaquin section playoffs. Kick is off and taken in at the 10-yard line there by Rockland as he finds a seam wide open. Nice blocking there and takes a big hit. Mitchell Kinsey taking a big hit there by Jonathan Krippis, but not before not before a 37 yard return there by Kinsey. And so great opening field position here for the Thunder to start off first and 10 from their own 47. So Logan Webb, made, well, he's been playing in the shotgun formation all evening long. Here's Daniel Niffin. Daniel Niffin looking like he wants to throw. He's gonna. He is gonna launch this one. Had his receiver wide open down the line. That was Garrett Van Rokel. but uh, Van Rokel not able to bring, haul that one in. So it brings up second and ten here uh, from the 47. Yeah, definitely an interesting call. You have a big return like that. A little bit of a risk uh, going with the possible, you know, the trick play there. Uh, you would have expected them to kind of go for something a little more basic, a little more, you know, let's run the ball, let's try and keep it simple and just keep it moving. Logan Webb, shotgun formation more sort of the, as he sends off there to Candle. Candle running out, get, picks up the first down and a little bit more. Nice run there by Raymond Candle into uh, Titan territory. Gets the first down. 
about a 11 yard run. Candleman having a good night tonight. So Rockland on the move here, really pushing Antelope back. And Burmester in motion. Webb Web rolling out to his right and had a receiver fall down. And he's going to get the pass interference there. Pass was intended there for Spencer Gregg. However, he was caught up there with DJ Hollingshead. And immediately, I thought the turf had taken him down. But actually, not DJ Hollingshead. That was Matt Hall. But uh, I think Matt Hall, and to me it looked like uh, Spencer Gregg was just, had the turf just take him down, and, and Matt Hall unfortunately gets called with the uh, pass interference penalty. Yeah, def definitely an unfortunate call there for, uh, for Antelope. Uh, you know, you're playing good defense, guy trips, and uh, refs might, have, might not have seen what caused him to fall down. Yeah, you just see the player falling down and throw the flag. And, uh, no way to, to pick that back up and gives Rockland first and 10 from their Titan 28. There's another flag. Pass was intended for Niffin. Flag over in the area of the hole of holding. Yeah, that, they had a lot of pressure and that guy was getting held up by his shoulder pads. So uh, pretty easy call there for the refs. So that'll push back the Thunder, no, 10 yards. They'll be facing first in 20 from the 38. So sort of really getting pushed back. Brings up a first and 20. Folks, make sure you tune in here if you're like soccer, we got the so section, Sac Joaquin section finals here in divisions, uh, in all the divisions tomorrow for soccer here on CIF Sac Joaquin TV. Here's Logan Webb looking at his near side, finds Spencer Gregg all alone by himself, has one guy to beat, finally knocked down inside, right at about the 11 yard line, and a big pickup here for the Thunder. When you look at that play, it's a great play because. At the worst, it's going to give you 10 or 11 yards, help you eat away at some of that penalty yardage you accumulated there. Uh, instead, he takes it for the full 20. I want to give you an update here, an unbelievable update. It's five minutes left in the third quarter. Stag leading Pleasant Grove 21 to 7. Here is. Logan Webb on play action, looking in the end zone, almost picked off, but as he was hit, right as the ball was approaching him was Burmester, Corey Burmester, taking a hit from both sides. Burmester looking for the flag. He's not going to get it, but uh, so it'll bring up a second and 10 from the Antelope Beloved. And here come right now leading Manteca, 23 to 14. 459 left in the third quarter. And division three. Right back here, Candle the Dizzle. And I love showing blitz. And off to Candle. And got nothing. And good, great read there on the stop. As Michael Okaraki comes up the middle, gets a big loss there for the Thunder. Brings up third and 12. Ten oh seven to go here in the third quarter. Big third down coming up here for defensively for the Titans because you want to maintain the lead here. You don't want to give New life here for Rockland. Here's Webb looking into the end zone. No flag on the play. Pass intended there for Burmester. Again, Corey Burmester 
really arguing with the official, wondering why there was no flag. He's saying he was held. But uh, you got to say that was DeMarie Brazil. Good coverage there on Burmester. So brings up fourth and 12, and that'll bring out Rockland to try a field goal. Looks like it's going to be about a 30-yard try. So Grant Mook coming up to kick the 30-yarder here for the Thunder. Kick is up. It looks good from my point, and he gets a signal from the officials. So Antelope able to hold on third down, and Rockland decides to go ahead and take the 30-yard field goal. As Antelope leads, Rockland 21 to 17 with 9.42 to go here in the third quarter. Right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. You want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Yeah, Joey, definitely a big thing there. Definitely uh, get some points. Uh, maybe it's not a touchdown. Maybe it's not all you hoped for. But, you you know, you get that lead to less than seven points. And, you know, walking away with points is never a bad thing. Yeah, and you got to say, you know, it, it, you know, at least they, they were able to get points up on the board. Here's a deep kick. This one's going right at Winston. Winston takes it at his own five-yard line and gets a burst of speed. And you can hear the excitement. Each time this kid touches the ball, there's just – a lot of excitement in and around the area as he was able to take it out to about the 29-yard line. Yeah, definitely one of those players where the ball gets near him and you know that there's always the potential for something huge to happen. Uh, even on that one, yeah, he gets stopped at the 29, but still he, he took that ball pretty deep and he had a pretty solid return off of that. Yeah, 24-yard return there for Tyler Winston. And so, again, I hope it's really going to need to get Winston involved here if they want to maintain this lead. As Rockland is charging there, we're going to get a flag here. And, and Antelope, all of a sudden, Antelope was playing mistake-free football here. But, uh, you know, those last few moments, the last few minutes at the end of the first half, uh, it seemed to have carried on here uh, and, and to start here the offensively the second half as the first play is, is a false start. Yeah, and they, you know, they, if they want to uh, end this momentum, if they want to put some points on the board, these little five-yard losses, do it, they don't, it's not doing them any favors. Brings up a first and 15 here from their own 24. Three wide, wide receivers here to the near side. We'll send the man in motion. Here's Winston. Winston on the flat. Hit immediately there by Spencer Gregg. Just dropped short of the 30. So bring up second and 11 here from the. One well, great defensive read there. Guy's going to catch the ball. And, yeah. you know, the best thing you can do, wrap him up, limit the amount of yards he gets. He gets four yards. Definitely a lot better than him getting 10 or 15. I uh, really love the reaction on the defense there to wrap him up and limit his production on that play. Second and 11 from the 28, 8.53 to go here in the third quarter as Tyler McCombs looks over to the sideline. And I'm not sure if that time was, you uh, knew the playing clock was winding down or he saw his offensive coordinator or coach Matt Ray calling for him. But uh, Tyler Winston, Tyler McCombs, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, immediately calling for the timeout. So 8.49 to go here as Antelope still leading Rockland in the third quarter, 21 to 17 on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us, uh, follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Want to give you an update here on some of the scores and around the area, especially here in Division Two. Del Campo right now leading 34 to 20 in the third quarter over Whitney. Uh, you can hear that on uh, one of the other updates here on our site, right here on CIF 
CAF TV. As here's McCombs. Sends Vincent in motion. Vincent takes a handoff, but ran into his own man there. And we got a flag there. Now I think this is going to be a. Uh, a I think this is going to be a, another personal foul here, Brian, but uh, it may go against Rockland. Yeah, it looked like, I mean, it looked like they had him stopped and uh, somebody came in there to just take a little extra hit on him and they are probably going to get burned on that one. Yeah, I think I saw a face mask and that's it. There's a, there's a call. Face mask going to go against Rockland and, you know, these personal foul calls, it just it really, really hurt, uh, can really, you know, hurt a team give the other side momentum I and mean, you saw what happened there in the first half with Rockland in the second quarter specifically uh, and, and so Rockland had a good thing going there defensively but uh, given a new fresh set of downs and yardage here to the Titans so first and 10 here from the 44 here's Krippus up the middle that's a name we it, haven't really called all that much tonight. No, Jonathan Krippus, you know, they've really been doing a lot of, uh, we haven't seen a lot of Krippus, we haven't seen a lot of Winston. And, you know, when the, when the you know, when you need yardage, when you downs, when you need to win a ball game, you know, when you want to make sure you want to get the ball to your playmakers. And that's what uh, Krippus and, you know, this offense is built on. Well, you know, the Krippus is, you know, his running ability and Winston's athletic ability and able ability to, you know, snag balls from the air. You know, Tyler Winston now set up in the slot. Here's McCombs rolling and trying to set up the screen pass and pressure from from Rockland really forced him to throw that ball short, but pass was intended there for Titus Vincent. Yeah, that pressure you could tell was a lot more than he expected. Uh, he had to backpedal a lot further uh, just to get rid of the ball. Uh, they, they really brought the heat on that one. Great, great defensive play by them. They knew it was a screen, so let's go out all out and just force him to make a bad throw. Coming up here, they are 9 o'clock here on the West Coast. Antelope, California, to be exact. Joey Gonzalez alongside Brian Hassler. Tim King, our videographer for this evening. As Antelope shifts the formation. There's McCombs, play action. Sets up the screen. And this time, not going anywhere. Really uh, had no chance at it as Nick Morgan coming in hard and snuffed out the screen pass. And so it's going to force Antelope to pass here. Yeah, kind of interesting because Rockland has done a great job reading that screen pass almost every single time. Uh, every time they've gone to that screen pass, they seem to, you know, they seem to have it sniffed out. They seem to have somebody on it. Uh, might, might be one of those plays they might want to give up on. So D.J. Hollins had setting up the punt. High and over and kick. Rockland trying to stay away from it. And Rockland player was trying to try to take it uh, on his own. And doesn't really doesn't get anywhere with that to Skyler Gonzalez. You know, I mean, a lot of times I know you, you see the ball and you think you can do something with it, but, uh, you know, it's lucky that, uh, that when that ball starts bouncing like that and it just uh, you really can't tell where it's going, the hardest thing to do is try to maintain possession, pick it up and maintain possession in that situation because it's so easy to get it knocked out of your hands there. And so if I was if I was Coach Benzel, I'd be talking to Skyler Gonzalez and yeah, I mean, saying, hey, no, you see the ball bouncing around like that, you just let it go. Out of the ten things that can happen off of something like that, nine of them are bad. <laughs> yes, you're right. So. <laughs> you you want to stay away from that one. Yeah, it didn't kick up a, but more than a couple of yards. Here's Logan Webb. Zings it. Nice pass there across. Out finds Jim Pauly. Yeah, great pass, great throw. Uh, he had the defender draped all over him. He still comes down with it. Uh, you can't complain about a play like that. Positive yardage and keeps the confidence building. So we'll bring up second and four here from the Rockland 43. It's cold and wet evening here in Antelope, California. As Logan Webb sets up in shotgun formation. He rolls to his left. Looking to his right. Finds 
Niffin all by himself and the flag, but able to come down with the ball. Daniel Niffin. Hanging on for the pass. Got the interference flag, but Daniel Niffin, a big pass there from Logan Webb. And, yeah, it's just, you know, that was one of those big plays there, uh, Brian, where Logan Webb just kind of, uh, you know, just unleashed it, you know, kind of hung up in the arrow a little bit. You could see Daniel Niffin had to slow up on it, which allowed the defender to kind of catch up to him and probably probably is what affected that to pass interference call. Well, a little excusable for that to hang in the air. Uh, again, running to his left, right-handed quarterback. Uh, the fact that he was able to be that accurate and get it that far down the field when he's thrown off, thrown against his body like that, just incredibly impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, uh, you know, it's a deep pass there across the field. And so Rockland looking to take the lead here as they're in goal line, first and goal territory, run right up the middle. Raymond Kendall gets stopped. We'll bring up second and three. Our second and goal from the three. Five twenty-eight to go here in the. Five twenty-eight to go here in the. Third quarter is Logan Webb back in shotgun formation. Here is Candle right up the middle. There's going to be a flag. And. It looked to me that Kendall stopped, so I think, you know, it's probably it's gonna. It looks like it's gonna go against Rockland. Probably a false start here, Brian. Which is too bad because he got in. I yeah. mean, they they avoid the penalty. They got the lead now. Well, and he now, probably got in yeah, <laughs> on, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the early, you know, on the false start there. Yeah, that that, that really may have helped. <laughs> but uh, so they push him back to the six yard line to bring up uh, second and goal from the six. Just a whole lot of flags tonight. That, that has been, I think, one of the stories of this game is how many penalties have been called. 4.58 to go here in the third quarter as Logan Webb sets up in shotgun formation. Here's a play action to the fake. Finds a 10 for the touchdown. Titans and Jared Amateur, his second touchdown of the evening. And Rockland has taken the 23-21 lead here, pending the extra point. On a great play there, the fake pitch, defense bought. Uh, your tight end just sneaks his way right in the end zone. Nobody's in front of him. Uh, easy pitch and catch there. Uh, great, great job by Rockland finishing off that drive. The extra point right through the uprights is good. And Rockland storming back, 24 unanswered. And they now take the lead here in the third quarter as they lead the Titans 24-21 to 21 right here at your destination for playoffs and high school sports, playonsports.com. Folks, Play on Sports is not only your destination for high school football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com. High School Sports lives here. And if this game is any indication of what you're going to be seeing in the playoffs, uh, we're, we're definitely in for some exciting nights. Uh, you know, just uh, the momentum is swayed back and forth in this game so well. 21 straight points for Antelope, 24 straight points for Rockland. Uh, really anybody's game right now. Logan Webb's third touchdown of the pass of the night. Oh, gives the Thunder the lead and almost uh, Antelope may have coughed that one up. They probably were able to jump on top of it and maintain possession. You see Rockland's not celebrating. Yeah, he, he coughed it up, but they uh, fortunately they had a couple guys were able to jump on that thing. Yeah, Rockland really moving with a lot of, you know, some pep in their step. And you can see, you know, I mean, it looks like Antelope, uh, you know, all that momentum, all that mojo they were playing with, it's kind of like, you know, it has left the, the team. Yeah. And you can feel it in the stands. I mean, you can just feel it in the stands here that, that you know, Antelope is going to have to, you know, regain some of that uh, that magic that uh, gave them that 21-point lead. Here's Rogers off tackle. Well, and you've mentioned it before, Joey, but 
this antelope team of any team should know how quickly a 20 point lead can evaporate. Uh, they of all teams should know, hey, it, it's never, it's not over when it's 20 points. Right, yeah. You know, and, and you said, I mean, some of the you know, execution here as of late has been poor. I give credit to Rockland, Rockland for not giving up and, and going in and, and putting the ball in Logan Webb's hands and, you know, able to storm back. And, and their defense as well. His defense has held strong here. Here's McCombs out to Mercado, able to get, uh, able to come down with the pass and get the first down here for the Titans. And this is when it really gets fun here. When both teams start airing it out here, Brian, and, and really get moving up and down the field. Yeah, a great catch there by Steven Mercado. When you saw the defender in front of the receiver there looking over both shoulders, uh, he lost track of his guy. And so I think he was hoping that throw was just going out of bounds. Uh, but yeah, great throw, great catch. Winston goes in motion. There's a handoff. He's going to take the handoff, sweep into his far side, looking for a blocker. Finally forced out of bounds. Is able to pick up positive yardage. And at this point, anytime you can pick up positive yardage, it's a good thing here for, uh, for the Titans. Well, and you mentioned it before, Joe. I mean, you, you give the ball to your playmakers. Even if all you're getting off of Winston on this play is four or five yards, you're getting him the ball. You're keeping him in the game and the potential that he has to break that thing for a big game is always there. Yeah, I mean, he has that, that big game potential at any moment he, can, he touches the ball. And you need to you need to keep him involved. So good call there for uh, by Coach Ray. So bring up second and five here from the Antelope 48. Here's Tyler Winston again. And that's this one is dangerous. We get him out into space. Good job collapsing on Winston there. Tackle made. Tackle made there by Cage Miller. But uh, nice to see Tyler Winston touch the ball here, back to back place here for the Titans. Brings up third and two here from the Rockland 49, just under three minutes ago here in the third quarter. And big third down here for Rockland. Uh, they've got the lead. You got to stop here. Uh, you, that's huge momentum change right there as well. Nice to hear the student body here, the student body crowd get involved as Krippus takes a handoff. Nice for a first down, nice for the first down. And feeling the spark here, possibly from the fans. On a great run by Krippus there. Obviously you could see he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna get a whole lot, but he saw this is where I need to get to. He found a hole, just exploit that hole and at least get that first down. Now, now first and 10 here from their own from the Rockland 46. Quick snap. Here's Krippus right up the middle. Gets a big push. Down to the around the 37. And now Rockland really pushing. I'm sorry, now Antelope really pushing Rockland back on its heels. A big eight yard gain there for the Titans. Brings up second and two here from the 38. Here's Krippus looking for room, able to step and nice cut there by Krippus, able to bring up, get him a first down, but Krippus, not sure what happened, but he's down on the ground. He's slow to get up as the crowd kind of subdued here. Well, he had a great run there. He's, you know, a great stop and go, stops, finds his hole and takes it. Uh, looks like he did get tripped up a little bit and landed pretty hard. Uh, Might have just got the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully that's all it is. Yeah, I absolutely. Krippus, big, very important to what uh, Antelope does here offensively. You can ill afford to have him go out of the game. First and 10. Here's Vincent. Titus Vincent has two touchdowns here tonight already. Dragged out of bounds near the inside the 30. They're going to mark this inside the 30 down to we'll give it a uh, uh, down to the 29. Minute 20. This drive really leading to what should be an exciting fourth quarter of football here in this ball game and something 
you know, the everyone knew watching this ball game as they came in. So officials going to go ahead and take a timeout as we've got an injury timeout, an injured Rockland player down on the ground here for uh, for the Thunder. So we'll take a timeout here. A minute 20 to go in the third quarter. It is Rockland leading Antelope 24 to 21 on your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information, and links to great highlights. Follow us, follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtubecom playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. PlayOnSports.com. Patrick Ryan, the injured Thunder player, able to jog off the field on his own. That's always a good sign when you see the player be able to, you know, get off the field on his own two feet. You know, at the rate that these players go at, you know, the collisions that happen, it's always, you know, it's always you, you get a, you hold your breath sometimes when you see a young player injured down there on the field. Yeah, you never want to see one of these guys, you know, get hurt real bad. Here's a handoff to Rodgers. Rodgers going off tackle, able to spin his way near the first down. Probably going to be short. So picks up three yards. It'll bring up uh, third and two as the clock goes under a minute here in the third quarter. Here's McCombs, hands off to Rogers, pounds it right up the middle, able to dive for the first down. A little bit more. Clock stops momentarily as the chains move for the first down. A nice big hole there for Rogers. And Rock is going to take the timeout here. To, and I think this timeout is more just to, you know, Antelope's just moving the ball so quickly down field. It's, it's probably just more of a, a timeout to, to allow Rockland to catch her breath and kind of reset yeah. uh, reset themselves. Yeah. So it gives Rockland, you know, Rockland taking their first timeout here of the, of the half. A little interesting taking it now uh, with 25 seconds left. You almost kind of wonder, well, can my guys hold out for 25 seconds? We'll take a breather. You know, coach can yell at them a little and say, hey, we need to step up. Uh, so it is a little interesting taking a timeout with 25 seconds left in the third quarter, uh, especially when you are, you know, this is obviously going to come down to probably a last possession. Want to give you a couple of scores here from around the area right now. Rackville leading Rio Linda 35 to 21. American Canyon beating River Valley tonight 37 to 8. Elk Grove pounding Ponderosa 41 to nothing. Four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Folsom beating Atwater, 56 to 12, four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The final in Yuba City, it's Del Oro 45, Yuba City 21. As I still haven't uh, been able to get a Buhat Colony McNair score here for you folks, but uh, uh, Sierra beating Rosemont 21, eight to eight. So back on the field, here's McCombs looking for Mercado. Mercado able to bring Get this one, takes it inside the 20, down to about the, near the 15. I'm sorry, inside the 10. Well, he's inside the 10, down to the six. On well, a whole lot of misdirection there. You saw some misdirection out of the backfield. You saw one of the receivers do a curl route or come up short. Uh, that defense was watching all this other stuff happen. Missed, that, missed the deep receiver there. That's going to be the last play there of the quarter as Antelope driving down the field here. They've got momentum back. They got the pep in their step, but uh, they still trail Rockland 24 to 21 right here in the Division II Sacqua Kings section opening playoff round. Right here, your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups? 
like the one you are enjoying here tonight. Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Taking a look. Taking a look at the scoreboard from around the area. Stag leading Pleasant Grove 21 to 13 in the fourth quarter. Granite Bay blanking Napa 38 to nothing currently. Vacaville 35, Rio Linda 21, that's in the fourth. Intercom leading Manteca 23-21. That game's all of a sudden getting interesting with 10.57 to go in, left in the fourth. However, as uh, actually now Stag, the Stag leading Pleasant Grove 21-19. And that is a final as Granite Bay beat Napa 52 to nothing. Here's Titus, no, Johnny Rock. Was it Titus Vincent? Titus Vincent getting stopped there right at the one. Yeah, and he looked like he had enough momentum to carry him into the end zone. Uh, and then he hits that last yard and he just drops. So I, I thought he was going to have enough uh, steam to carry him all the way in. Actually, it's at the, they're at the two, so second and goal from the two. Tyler Winston has not scored here tonight as Vincent looking for his third touchdown of the night. He gets it. Goes over the top, and Titus Vincent gives Antelope back, gets the lead back here for the Antelope Titans on his third touchdown run of the night. Joe Trotta will go ahead and come in for the extra point. With 11.22 to go here in the fourth quarter, Enel takes the lead, 27 to 24, pending the extra point. And the kick is up and it's good. So as I said, folks, 11.22 to go here in the ball game. We've got a great one brewing here right now as Antelope has come back, scoring their first touchdown of the second half. They now take the lead over Rockland, 28-24, right here at your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Folks, Play On Sports is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also a place for most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com, high school sports resides here. A lot of great things you can do on the internet. You can go to YouTube. They got great videos of these bulldogs jumping on trampolines. Never get tired of that. And always fun to go to the Play on Sports page, check out the highlight clips, check out the full game action. Uh, you know, a lot of great Play on Sport. You know, switch back between the bulldogs and the Play on Sports. It's always a good thing. I'm partial to cat videos. Cat? I don't know what it is about the cat videos, but cat videos. And you know, the cat videos are always. Uh, you know, they, they're they're a major attraction there on the YouTube. I, uh, you know, you see these cute little chubby <laughs> bulldog puppies. It just, you know, I'm kind of a heartless person, but even that <laughs> melts my heart. So here's Estrada with the kick here. Taken inside the five, right around the four. For Rockland finally got stopped hard. Kinsey. Looked like he got stopped solid in his tracks there by Demaria Brazil. It almost looked like he just lowered his head and ran into whoever was in front of him. So Rockland will start this drive here from the 26. 11.15 to go. Need to look at us get into the end zone here on this drive as they're trailing by four. Logan Webb. He's been in shotgun formation all night long. Antelope only rushing three, but able to flush him out and finally take it down for the lost Michael Karaki. And if I'm not mistaken, that may be his third sack of the evening. Yeah, and definitely a big coverage sack there. Only blitzing three. Webb couldn't find anybody. Uh, you got to get That's a full, the whole defense deserves credit for that right. sack. 
Well, and, and the the one thing that's remarkable, I mean, not only was there coverage downfield, but they busted these the, the three, uh, the line busted through that offensive line of Rockland fast. Oh, yeah. Okaraki had gotten back to him so quick before Webb even had a chance to know what happened. And here's a big run here right up the middle by Kendall. Kendall getting near. Should be enough for a first down. They move the chains. A big run there by Kendall. And to me, that is kind of a risky play. Uh, the running game has not been extremely successful all night. It's second and long. Uh, but again, the defense isn't expecting it. Great call. First and 10 from the Rockland 37. 10 11 to go here in the. Opening round of the Division II South Joaquin section playoffs. Here's Webb rolling near side. Set out to Giampoli. Giampoli forced out of bounds there by Steven Mercado. Takes it all takes it out to they're looking to see whether it's enough for a first down. Looks like they might call for a measurement here. Yeah, it looked like they were spotting it about a yard short, and then another uh, referee came in and I think adjusted where the spot was supposed to be. So it may actually, if they measure this thing, it may actually be close to a first down. They're trying to eye it from way across the field. I don't know if they just don't want the chain gain to come out or or not, but uh, uh, you yeah. know, it, it looks like chain gain's getting ready to move. This is always quicker and easier in John Madden football. The, <laughs> the, the chain gang seems to move instantaneously when it's on my PlayStation. Uh, these guys aren't, aren't quite as quick as the video game. Let's see here, Tim King getting us, uh, trying to get us a good angle here on the video. Looks from my vantage point and what Tim King has given us, like it might just be enough. Yeah, at number 77's. Got a couple players standing. And it is a first down. First down, Rockland. Tim King, definitely the toughest member of our crew. <laughs> we sit in this nice climate-controlled press box. He's up on the roof with all the uh, the cold, the wind, and the rain uh, getting us great footage. So definitely the toughest member of our crew. You know, I like how you say nice climate-controlled. Here, Bean, you're the only one in short sleeves. Everyone else is all bundled uh, up here in the you press know, box. When you, when you grow up in Utah, 48 degrees ain't much. That, that's almost shorts weather. Here's Webb looking for Jim Pauly again. Jim Pauly, an eight-yard pickup there for the Thunder. So Titans need to going to have to shore up there defensively because Rockland's just been able to march down the field and you know, and that's what uh, you know it, that's what's great about the playoffs here is game kind of winding up to being all that it was expected to be there's Webb gonna get flushed out of the pocket but Webb able to get out scramble Shh. able to get his forward progress down and, and gets a first down here for the Thunder well, and the bit, that's the big benefit of getting so many, uh, such good yardage on first down. When you can get eight or nine or even six or seven yards on first down, if you have a bust to play like that, even if all your quarterback does is get a couple yards, well, that's good enough for the first down because you did so well, you know, on the first down. 9-16 to go here in the ball game is Rockland trailing Antelope 28-24. 20, Rockland on the move, looking to get into the end zone. There's Logan Webb, play action, looking to near side, gets it out to Burmester. Burmester able to move in his legs, gets the first down and drops the ball. Whoa. And Alabates just stripped that, and we've talked about this before here, Brian. You know, there's no reason to, to be working – you know, to, to try to continue and keep pumping your legs to try to get, that's a big turnover. Well, a I, big, I'm, big turnover I'm there by Burmester. I'm surprised on that one because it almost looked like uh, his, forward, his forward progress had stopped, and I thought the refs were going to well, call it, and then they knocked it loose. But because he kept trying to get, you know, get an inch or two more, uh, 
that that allowed them to get in there and strip the ball. Well, let's get also, you know, there's a, that situation where it could have been also that Antelope might be trying to keep them up, trying to stand them up, so they have an opportunity to strip the ball. And, and Burmester, what has to happen in that situation is Burmester has to give himself up and cannot fight, the, you know, the, 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 the pressure and just uh, uh, – so his forward progress stops. And we it looks like Vincent may have fumbled. We may have a fumble here again on Rockland. The officials not signaling it. It's gonna stay, it's gonna stay antelope ball. And it gets a big cheer from the Titan fan base. Picks up a couple of yards here for so second and eight here from the 28. Here's Rogers. Rogers, there's a flag on the play, but Rogers able to get this across the 35. And what you may see here is probably a hold. Wow. So a uh, face mask going against uh, Rockland. Rockland really shooting themselves in the foot here. Just the incidental face mask, but still enough for a first down here for the Titans. Yeah, things going from bad, going bad from bad to worse for Rockland. Uh, first the fumble, then the face mask. Uh, definitely got to do something to to get that ball back. Brings up first and 10 from the Antelope 42. There's a flag early. And it's probably going to be a personal foul as Antelope celebrating. There's going to be something going against Rockland sideline. And Coach Benzel not happy with what's happening over there. And, and this is what you don't want to see is when things, you know, when, when – situation becomes pressure tight like this uh you, you know you start kind of essentially giving plays away giving away yardage and it's an unsportsmanlike penalty uh against the uh rockland sideline and that's just i mean how what good is that what good is that too you know i mean i understand you're frustrated you get frustrated for what's happening out there but it doesn't do anything you just spotted 15 yards here for antelope and the way that antelope has been playing and moving here uh that's a dangerous call yeah they don't need the help in moving no. the football and giving them the face mask and then the unsportsman right. like uh that that's that's help they don't need uh to move that football down the field especially where it is such a tight game uh seven minutes 44 seconds left they get a touchdown and things are definitely very difficult for rockland as far as making a comeback so the penalty puts Antelope into Rockland territory. Coach Benzel pleading over there with the official. Not really happy with, uh, with some of the call here, but uh, brings up, uh, it's going to be first and 10 here from the Rockland 43 with seven and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Joey Gonzalez alongside Brian Hassler here from Titan Stadium. Here's handoff there to Vincent. Vincent gets in an open field, gets first down. A big run there by Titus Vincent. And a nice bit of running there by Titus Vincent. Probably his biggest run there of the night, even though he scored three touchdowns. That is the big, longest run of the night from scrimmage for Titus Vincent. And Titus Vincent showing up to uh, definitely looking for a player of the game. Honors here for PlayOnSports.com. Player of the game honors here tonight. Well, they, I mean, they've given him the ball in the toughest situations down at the goal line. A situation like this, uh, he's held onto the ball. He's done a great job, and like you mentioned, uh, like you mentioned, three of those times he was able to get in the end zone. First and ten from the Rockland 25. 6:58 to go. Antelope has lead 28-24, and Titus Benson really charging forward. And a nice piece of running here, back-to-back -back carries for Titus Vincent. Yeah, Vincent definitely seems to have the hot hand out there. Uh, just a good, solid game from him, good, solid running back. 
Nothing really flashy about what he does, no. but yeah. just great. You know, he stays low to the ground and he just powers ahead. Just meat and potatoes, but to really doing what he needs to do in order to put this, uh, you know, in order to get the antelope. Here's Rogers. Rogers sweeping. Rogers looking for room. Rogers taken all the way down near the five yard line. So good bit of blocking there by the Titans moves as Rogers able to take it all the way down to the six. First and goal from the six. And Antelope knocking on the door. You gotta love what they're doing here. We're just gonna run the ball right at you. Uh, just gonna go head to head with you and we're gonna beat you. Six minutes to go here in the third in the final quarter as Winston in motion. Inside handoff there to Vincent. Vincent pushing forward. He's going to be down short of the goal line. But puts him inside the five-yard line. Second and goal from about the four. So McCombs coming back into the, back into the huddle. Second and goal from the four. Five and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. And... Antelope trying to seal the deal here. Combs sends Johnny Rogers in motion. Inside handoff and Titus Vincent pushed back for a loss here. And good defensive stop there by the Rockland Thunder. Loss of three there for Antelope. And this is definitely what you're looking at uh, if you're if you're Rockland. Let's hold them here, even if we're limiting them to the field goal. Touchdown lead, definitely doable as far as uh, getting the ball down the field, getting this game tied up. So, I mean, there there is still a lot of hope left for Rockland on this one. Yeah, Coach Ray really trying to use up some clock here. As he was Willie, really, <laughs> not Willie, but really trying to wind the play clock down as little as low as he could, but uh, finally took the, taking the timeout. So that gives Antelope one timeout here remaining for the ball game. But four and a half, four minutes, 33 seconds to go here. We'll keep it right here as Antelope leading 28-24. And, you know, going back to that play, that uh, fumble that Burmester, really, really tough because Rockland had some momentum. That drive was really carrying him. But uh, Burmester not able to give himself up there, not able to be called down on his forward progress and eventually well, and fumbling I, the ball. I, and I think that may have been the, uh, what had uh, kind of was the cause of the unsportsmanlike on the sideline, maybe a little frustration that caused that face mask penalty. Uh, I think Rockland will tell you, their coaches will tell you, yeah, he'd given up and the refs, his forward progress had stopped and he should have been down. That's bad, you know, they'll, they'll tell you that that was a bad call by the ref, and I think that frustration allowed Antelope to get a lot of free yardage. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I would say, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, I agree with that. But uh, at the same time, you know, as a, as a coach, you know, got to think, you know, that was three, four plays ago. Oh, yeah. You know, there's nothing you can do about it now. And so you just got to go out there, send your defense out there, make sure they, they stop, you know, they, to stop this, this offense. Uh, you can't give you know a, a team any extra momentum. So let's see if Rockland can hold here on this third down. Look at Tyler Winston. It's Tyler Winston all alone. They're gonna set up the screen play and good play there by defensively by Rockland and Jared Amateur coming up big there on the screen passes that it's set up there for Vincent. Well, we've seen it all night. I, again, I'm surprised they went with the screen pass because of all the plays that Rockland has seemed to have stopped every single time has been that screen pass. So Joe Estrada is going to be setting up for what is about a 24-yard uh, 25, field goal. 4.28 to go, and so it's a big stop there by Rockland. Still have yourself a ch chance with a... Uh, you know, have to put it in the end zone. So snap is up, it's good. The 24 yard field goal there by Joe Estrada puts Antelope up by seven as they take a 31-24 lead. Or man, but uh, Rockland now 
with four and a half, under four and a half to go, uh, it's, it's shaping up. It's going to be an exciting finish. And you said it earlier here, Brian, it might come down to who has possession last. Well, and especially in a situation like this, 420, 423 left. Uh, Rockland has two timeouts. Antelope has one timeout. Uh, anything can really happen here. Even if Rockland can get the ball down and score, uh, the way Antelope has moved the ball, for all we know, they can come back and, and get the ball down there and score again. So, uh, you know, really a great game. The possibilities on this are kind of limitless. And, I mean, for all we know, this thing goes overtime and we're here for a little bit longer. But, you know, definitely neither team has given up, and that's the great thing about these high school playoffs. Uh, it's just great to see these teams playing as hard as they can, get putting it all together, overcoming mistakes, and, you know, giving both, giving both sides of the fans a really great opportunity to see their teams giving that full effort. So 4.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. An exciting one here from Titan Stadium in Antelope, California, on the campus of Antelope High School as Estrada kick is deep. Estrada's kick, kick is deep. Taken there inside the five-yard line as Kenzie finally brought down at about the 22. Folks, want to let you know to stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. An exciting one we've had here tonight. And before the night is over, hopefully we get some of those scores here for you. But uh, got a great one brewing here as Logan Webb in shotgun formation finds Jim Pauly out in the flat. Jim Pauly takes it across the 32 to the 35. You got you to gotta love that effort. I mean, it looked like he was going down. He puts forth the effort to dive forward for a few extra yards and pick up that first down. Uh, ju just that effort is incredible to see from a player it's been a long night you know these guys are tired and cold and they're turning it on at just the right moment rockland trailing 31 24 four minutes ago rockland has been been on the losing end as a couple of uh, tough ones went into double overtime against granite bay eventually losing that one here's logan webb and almost throwing a pick very dangerous pass as he threw it into double coverage there looking for jim Pauly. And Logan Webb, uh, got to be breathing a sigh of relief if you're Logan Webb. Well, and Jim Pauly didn't even look like he was ready for the ball. Uh, looked like Logan Webb, uh, again, maybe they weren't on the same page, but he definitely tried to force that into heavy coverage. Uh, got lucky on that one because that probably should have been an interception, and that, that would have been the ball game most likely. A lot of finals coming in and around the area. But we've still got a great one brewing here right now, right in front of you. Here's Logan Webb. Going to get flushed out of the pocket, looking for something to happen. Getting the near sideline, finally forced out of bounds. Able to get a, get a couple of yards. It's going to bring up third. Third and long, third and eight here. You got to wonder right now is, I mean, there's three... 337 left in the game. They got two timeouts. Is this four down right. territory? Yeah, well, uh, that's what Auckland. I was, you know, I, 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 that's what I was thinking myself, and I wasn't sure whether or not I was ready to call that. But, you know, as, as you said, I, I can I can see it happening. And, uh, well, there goes Rockland. Rockland's going to go ahead and waste, uh, spend, I shouldn't say waste, but spend one of their timeouts right now and, and talk about it, decide what to do here on third and eight. Um, you know, obviously, I think you know the the, the you know it's going to be a passing down. I can't imagine them uh, wanting to run with it, especially when you got uh, Logan Webb out there. And um, well, Webb has done an incredible job of running to his left and throwing uh, to the right. So that's worked all night. Uh, may, may not be a bad time to do it now, uh, but you know they they and they may even be looking at this right now, talking about the next two plays. You know, well, what we're going to do on this play and what we're going to do on the next play. Uh, but now they have one timeout, so that definitely makes this a little more 
to me it seems like it's a little more likely that this would be four down territory. So something I know that uh, NLO fans will really be interested here uh, as uh, Del Campo beats Whitney here in the in Division Two, 34 to 27. That's a final. Uh, Foothill over Deer Valley, 28 to 17, and Edison over Bovis West, 41 to 17 to 15. I'm sorry. Here's third and long for Logan Webb and Rockland. Logan Webb finds Spencer Gregg right down the middle, able to pick up upended for the first down before Demaria Brazil was able to bring him down. But uh, big play, nice uh, look off there for Logan Webb. Force the, you force the safety to, to move on that play and open up a nice, uh, nice, you know, middle of the field there for Spencer Gregg. 3.20 to go here in the ball game as Burmester goes in motion. Here's Logan Webb rolling to his left. Finds Burmester. Finds Burmester able to catch the ball. A nice pass there and able for Burmester. You saw him get in motion, go in motion and able to find the opening out in the out nobody around him and able to come down a nice grab there too. Kind of a shoulder catch there by Burmester. Well, he got hit hard. Uh, he got he got smacked by that by a defender. He held on to the ball, did a great job there. 2.55 to go here. Here's Logan Webb. Logan Webb trying to get something to go. Oh, it's a dangerous pass, and it goes out of bounds. As Niffin was looking, he understood. He realized, hey, I got to come back on this one or else this was going to get picked off. Well, and that, that thing looked like it slipped coming out of his hands. That looked like a little bit of a wounded duck because uh, I, I don't think he wanted it to be that close to the sideline. Uh, he, he did not get a good throw on that one. So Rockin coming out into the... Uh, Spread formation sends four receivers out. Sends Burmester, brings Burmester in the backfield. Here's a handoff there to, to Kaylin, Kendall. So it brings up third and long now for the Thunder. Yeah, it looked like he ran into his own blocker right there. Again, just lower the head and run. And, uh, you know, it looked like he had a little bit of space on either side, but it seemed like he just ran right into his own guy. They're in about two minutes to play here in the ball game. A big third down here for the Thunder. Logan Webb. Back to pass. Pass caught by Spencer Gregg. But it's not going to be enough here for the first down. So Spencer Gregg is going to be cut short. So play, cl clock continues runs. But Rockland's going to go ahead and take their third and final timeout here with 149 to go in this bowl game and it's coming down to this one but it's turning out to be a nail biter Rockland trying to tie the ball game up here as they're down 31 24 and you know I mean Brian here this is going to be when you know interesting play call comes up here you know it, he, they, you, just, you just need four yards to convert the first down to continue the ball game. Or, you know, if he stops short or an incomplete pass, could pretty much kill it and end it. Yeah. Uh, because all all Antelope has to do is run the ball once and just take a knee and, and it's over. Uh, so, I mean, what in your head, your, your coach Benzel, what are you, what are you telling your players? What, what, what do you want to draw up here? Oh, yeah, and, that, and that's a tough one because not only that, uh, if you keep nickel and diming it down the field the way you are, five yards here, four yards here, you don't have any more timeouts. And so at the rate you're going, uh, you know, so you, you may look at this and go, okay, well, we only need four yards, but even then, that clock's going to keep rolling. Right, but they're, you know, they're, they're an offense that really can, can speed it up and, oh, and yeah. you know, and, and keep the ball moving. So I don't think time, you know, and nickel and, you know, they're, they're well enough within range where they can, you know, go with the short five oh, yeah. to seven yard, you know, dump off passes, but... Uh, here we go. Here's Logan Webb, and this may be the season right here for the Thunder. Logan Webb in shotgun formation. Play action. Find Spencer Gregg. 
for the first down, forced out of bounds. And, you know, that's the other thing. You go to the sidelines there, uh, Brian, and you're able to stop the clock. So uh, they would have stopped the clock there because the chains moved. But once yeah. they get the chains reset, clock would would go ahead and start. Spencer Gregg doing the, keeping the heads up play. Only took four ticks off the clock there. And first and ten here for the Thunder with a minute 44 to go season, here. Season stays alive for another drive. But, yeah. Huge play there, great call. Great call by the coaches. Logan Webb in shotgun formation sends Burmester in motion. Logan Webb, he's getting pressure here. There's a brought down by Akaraki. A big loss there, a minute 29. Clock continues to click. Rockland's gonna huddle up here. They have no timeouts. They need to get up and line up quickly here, Brian. A minute 20. And good coverage there downfield by the Titans defense. Giving Akaraki time to pass. And the pass is picked off there by Antelope. Intercepted there. Tyler Winston. And who else but Tyler Winston would go ahead and come up with the interception there on Antelope. And they may, that may just about do it here as Antelope May setting up to set, win their first playoff game here in school history. Well, and you can't just, I mean, Winston did a great, made a great catch there, made a great grab. But the other thing you got to give credit to is that defensive line getting in there. They only had two or three guys coming in, and they were still getting the pressure on, on Webb. They were, they were hitting him. They were, uh, you know, forcing him to make those throws. Uh, again, that defense just stepped up huge there. One of six to go here in the ball game as Antelope takes a timeout as the press box starts to fill up. The crowd, you can hear the jubilation here with the crowd, and, and they can feel it just sitting on there. Can't wait to let all this expression, all this jubilation uh, release as Antelope is looking at their first playoff victory here in school history. And really, yeah, you should. it should just be a matter of you come out, you take a couple knees. Uh, neither side has timeouts. Uh, so barring some unforeseen miracle, uh, th this, should, this should be it. Logan Webb really just saw his receiver out there on the wide open. You know, I, I shouldn't say wide open, but, but trying to force it there. Pass was a little underthrown, and good job there by Tyler Winston to just stay in front of the receiver, playing behind, trailing the, trailing the receiver there and doing a smart job as he saw the sideline there. So 106 to go here in the final quarter. As Antelope just gonna take a knee to run down the clock. Yeah, get it under a minute. No, Rockland has no more timeouts left. And Antelope, their best season ever here as a as a ball club. We're gonna go ahead and go to ten and one. They will go again. We'll play the winner of the Buhat Colony and McNair game, and we'll host that one here. And really, so. you can't you cannot say enough about what Rockland has done tonight, trailing twenty one to nothing, and coming out and playing a great half. As the clock winds down, that's going to do it. Rock uh, Antelope fans celebrate here. Antelope, the players coming together as Antelope wins their first game, playoff game ever in school history. The final here from Titan Stadium. The Titans, 31, Thunder, 24. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stay tuned to PlayOnSports.com for our post-game coverage. We'll wrap up all the action in our post-game show, and we'll also mention our player of the game. That's coming up in just a few moments. Once again, the Antelope Titans, as the streamers come down, have defeated the Rockland Thunder 31-24 to on Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Prepare a 
Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Welcome back to Antelope, California, PlayOnSports.com postgame show. I'm Joe Gonzalez alongside my producer, Brian Hessler, and we just saw the Titans, Antelope Titans, defeat the Rockland Thunder by a final score of 30, uh, 31 to 24. And, Brian, I just want to say quickly, I mean, what, what a game, you know. Uh, it, it turned out to be a slugfest. As you said, it, to, you know, it came down to final possession, Rockland unable to, you know, overcome uh, turnovers here at the end as, as Logan Webb threw three tonight. That last one, though, being the costliest. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. And those turnovers, uh, the teams played a much cleaner second half than they did the first half. Uh, few Fewer penalties, you know, the turnovers were still there. But then at the end, the turnovers just killed. Uh, the turnovers really hurt a great Rockland effort because you got to give them all the credit in the world for playing the way they did. They could have given up at any time, and they just kept fighting. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, Ro Antelope coming up at, uh, coming out and, and spot, you know, I should say Rockland spotted uh, Antelope 21 points, uh, but uh, we said it, you know, Rockland storming back and, and scoring 24, uh, 24 unanswered. Uh, so give credit there to Rockland for, for not giving up and, and, you know, understanding you know, it's early. It's a long ball game, and they came back and stormed back. You know, Logan Webb throwing three touchdowns uh, this this evening to go ahead and get that uh, 24, you know, 21 point lead, and then the the kick there, the field goal there by Mook. It was a 30 yarder to get uh, 24 points, but that's all that it was going to happen there for for Rockland. And then Antelope, obviously, you know, answering back here. And, you know, so turnovers and penalties there. You know, is that that. The the second the drive next to the last you know the before the la the last drive where Burmester had turned the ball over, um, obviously there was a personal foul penalty call there actually a face incidental face mask call there and then the personal foul on the sideline uh, really put Antelope in position for that uh, for that final touchdown. Well, yeah, and that that fumble, I mean the interception at the end was obviously a huge one, but that fumble by Burmester is going to be one that the game really hinged on because Rockland was moving the football. It uh, looked like they were definitely going to, you know, they were on their way. And that fumble just held them back. That fumble flipped everything around. And, you know, that, that to me was one of those big moments of the game. In, in a game that was filled with a lot of big moments, a lot of big plays, a lot of highlights from both teams. But that one really decided the game in my mind. So, folks, unable to get our player of the game interview here uh, this evening, but uh, Raw Antelope goes ahead and wins their first uh, playoff game 
ever in school history as they be defeat uh, the Rockland Antelope, I should say, uh, as they defeat uh, the Rockland Thunder. Titus Vinson, our player of the game, as he rushed for three touchdowns. Folks, coming into tonight's ball game, Titus Vinson had 60 carries, 434 yards, but had only scored once all uh, season long. So great game there for Titus Vinson and using Titus Vinson. And, you know, you didn't see a lot of uh, Jonathan Krippis or Tyler Winston, but Tyler Winston making the biggest play possibly of all with that final interception. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up here from uh, Antelope, from Titan Stadium, where the Antelope Titans where the Antelope Titans defeated the Rockland Thunder 31-24. to We'd like to thank you for joining PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Friday Night Football from Antelope, California. Be sure to check PlayOnSports.com for information and links to all of our upcoming broadcasts. For our, my producer, Brian Hassler, our videographer, Tim King, I'm Joey Gonzalez saying so long, and we hope you'll join us next Friday night on your destination for high school sports and Friday Night Football, PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort.